Welcome to 2,730 Years and Counting, a podcast that is chronicling the re-emergence of the Lost House of Israel and its reconciliation with the House of Judah. Opinions of the interviewer and guests may not be the same, but we are all walking in discovery together. Come listen. Another episode of 2,730 Years and Counting. Uh, this time, we're going to have a, a, a gentleman that uh, those of you that have listened to previous episodes uh, will remember very well. His name is Alexander Vejic. And um, he just, it, we, he and I got to talking the other day and we decided that we need to get caught up because it's been a while since we've done anything and there's been much that's gone on. And, uh, Needless to say, he has comments on it, and those are comments that you need to hear and that I need to hear. So here we are today. Um, I'm Gene Porter. This this is my two-house podcast. It's called 2,730 Years, dot, 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 and counting. And uh, another day, another year, another time, we'll, we'll talk about why I use that title. But right now, today, uh, you need to hear a Hebrew tell you about what's going on in the world. And how he views it. So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to get out of the way. And Alexander, uh, you are welcome to start anytime you feel like it. Well, greetings, friends around the world. What a lovely opportunity to address you all, uh, our beloved audience. And uh, we know Gene and I both know very much how much our programs are very popular among you. <laughs> we get feedback all the time, and the feedbacks from all over the world are very positive. So. Uh, Indeed, people are looking forward every time we come on air that we, what are we going to say and what we have to say. Well, I want yes. to greet you on, not only on my behalf, but also on behalf of a, a newly formed organization which was formed this year uh, in the beginning months of this Roman pagan year. Uh, mm -hmm. The organization is called Hope of Israel Worldwide Church of God. That's how we named it. Namely, we had first radio, internet radio, Hope of Israel Worldwide. And then we came to the point where we thought we needed to kind of streamline our efforts in spreading the good news of the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. Yes. Is at the same yes. time the kingdom of God? And then we That's thought, right. well, we named ourselves you know, Hope of Israel. It comes from Jeremiah chapter 17. It comes, it says, you know, or hope, a hope of Israel. It comes from the, uh, from, uh, from a certain, uh, uh, well, it's kind of a, an exclamation that Jeremiah has. Mikve uh, Israel, you know, which is translated in our languages, our languages in Serbian, English, and so on, as hope of Israel. But Mikve, we all know those who are well acquainted with the Bible symbolism understand that Mikve. Uh, Mikwe was the uh, the foundational thing in the, uh, we may call it Hebrew religion or the Bible religion or God's way, however you want to call it anyway. It's certainly not uh, the religion, the true religion in the Bible is not called by any, by any after any, any man or woman or uh, uh, event. It's always called right. Haderek, the way, or it's right. called, you know, usually it's called the way. And that's the way of living, of course, because the prayer, what God is interested in his people, he was always interested they would live the right way of life, you know. But his people, of course, uh, being easily seduced by various uh, 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 pompous 
rites and rituals of other religions. His people always wanted to be something else. They didn't never wanted to be separate and be God's people. They just wanted to be just like everybody else. And uh, of course, then God said, "Fine, if that's what you want, my dear children, you will just be scattered to the utmost parts of the world, and you're going to lose your identity." You're going to become pagans and, uh, you know, you want to be pagans, fine, enjoy your paganism until <laughs> until yes. it gets to your head so much and until you be fed up and sick from it so much that you will stop at one point and think, where did we come from and uh, why did we come this far and why yes. is nothing working out in our lives? In many yes. people's lives, things are not working out, friends, because... They do not want to pay attention, not only to who they are, but they don't want to pay attention to the one, the creator who created them indeed. And so with Hope of Israel Worldwide Church of God, we wanted to establish, first of all, a good tradition of uh, of that Worldwide Church of God, which existed in the last century. Uh, the leader of that church, Herbert W. Armstrong, was the person who actually began spreading once again awareness of the 12 tribes, awareness of the 10 tribes of Israel and the house of Judah. He began, he, uh, in his uh, college that he founded, the uh, history of the tribes of Israel were extensively studied. He, and I've got all these materials from that time. And much of that I've used in our interviews. So I'm so proud to say that I've restored in many ways, I've restored in many ways the awareness of the house of Israel. And at the same time, we wanted to just uh, name organization that will have the core biblical doctrine right there in, and in front. You know, the hope of Israel, Mikve Israel, as right. Jeremiah put it. Mikve, yes. you know, Mikve is the Mikve are the uh, is the precursor of what uh, Christianity calls baptism, of what Messianics calls call immersion, but that's what it is. You remember in Mikves, Mikves were the uh, way how people ritually get purified in the Old Testament. And that's right. exactly why Jeremiah said, Mikve Israel, the hope of Israel. It's the hope of all the nations, you know, because as we know, the Apostle Paul tells us a great mystery in Romans 11. And he says, uh, I'm telling you a mystery. Uh, all, the, all the nations in the world will be grafted to Israel, to that... Yes. Uh, 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 how do you call it? Olive, uh, the uh, 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 you have the wild and the the other one, yes. olive. The uh, to that olive that is not wild. All these wild right. olives will be grafted to the to the real one, and then all world, all the nations will become Israelites, and they will be saved. That's a beautiful picture. It's a marvelous plan, the most amazing plan that only a supernatural being could have devised. And therefore, we. Uh, it was my idea, yes, and I'm an initiator of that. Uh, we just, they did the Hope of Israel. And then as we had the radio, the Hope of Israel Worldwide, and somebody remembered that we used to have Worldwide Church of God, which basically advocated many of the things that we do and advocated Hope of Israel, advocated the uh, identity of Israel. Because you have to understand, friends, British Israelitism, as they call it, was very popular back in the 18th and 19th century not only in the Anglo-Saxon world, but also among the Scandinavians, partly among the Benelux countries of the Benelux, Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg. And then yes. sometimes around the First World War, all of a sudden that kind of movement awareness kind of died, and especially after the Second World War. But then sometimes at a time when Hitler rose to power back in Germany in 1933, Sometimes around then, all of a sudden, there was a voice from America who said, you know, there is a core doctrine in the Bible, and you cannot understand the Bible unless you understand the identity of Israel. And that's exactly what we understand. We are very grateful for that beautiful understanding that comes from the eternal. And we named ourselves Hope of Israel, Worldwide Church of God, in honor to all those who have uh, given much of their time and efforts to trace down the tribes of Israel. And we have traced them down very well. You understand that uh, many Israelites basically gathered in Northwest Europe, in the British, on the British Isles, and also in the United States of America. However, there are many of those other, you know, uh, uh, individuals who are of the tribes, who got lost around the world, 
and yes. just basically have been assimilated by the various nations, just as it was prophesied. The prophecy right. that God mm -hmm. gave about his people was that they will lose their identity, they will be assimilated into pagan nations, and they would exactly forget who they are. But here we are again, and we are here to uh, indeed remind them who they are. Our radio, our internet radio, uh, Hope of Israel Worldwide, keeps preaching Bible doctrines 24 hours, seven days a week. Thankfully, it's internet. Thankfully, it's in our hands. <laughs> so yes. Nobody, nobody can stop it, you see, friends, because uh, it is it is prophesied in the Bible that there will be Satan forces, satanic forces that will be trying to exterminate all the awareness of Israel, to exterminate all the true Torah teachings, just like they tried right. to exterminate the Jewish people in the Second World War. And therefore, we have... Uh, we were thinking, what shall we do? And then we said, well, if we have a server in our hands, they can do nothing. It's far away from Europe, because Europe is a beast. It's the bestial continent. It has always been the bestial continent, friends, and don't have any, don't have any illusions about Europe. Europe has a long history, yes, indeed. Europe is an interesting continent, but European mindset, frame of mind of Europeans is bestial, friends has always been bestial. That's why your ancestors fled to the New World. That's why many of you uh, are born now in Australia, in New Zealand, in America, uh, even on the British Isles, because your, your ancestors fled from bestial Europe. Europe was always having a bestial religion, so-called Christianity, actually Roman Catholicism, which is called Babylon in the Bible. And it's called Babylon because it does practice all the Babylonian doctrines that were practiced by Nimrodian Babylon in back in those days. And we have Nimrod in, in, in the book of Genesis chapter 10. He is, he is uh, described as the first um, dictator of the world. And right. uh, in any case, uh, now we have, not only do we now have Hope of Israel Worldwide Church of God, but we do have Hope of Israel Worldwide Radio, that will be constantly, constantly keeps broadcasting truth to all the world in English language. We are working to have it, hopefully, uh, we have some Spanish materials, we'll hopefully have some in French and so on. But in any case, uh, what we have done, and I'm so proud to announce to all of you, what we Israelites have done in the last several months is to start our own radio. And... Um, Plus, of course, on that radio, what do we broadcast? Well, we broadcast these programs. <laughs> so, if you want to hear my, me and Gene again, well, Hope of Israel Worldwide, there it is. And you will just hear us. You'll just hear us there often, very often. Our programs are very often reproduced there because they're just gems. That's what, that's what people believe. And uh, so those are the achievements I'm very proud of. Those are the achievements I hope to, uh, I hope to further. And uh, in the last several months, perhaps another good news. Uh, some of you do know that there is a deep corruption in one continent called Africa, where we have where we have false Christians. I'll call them that way because I don't know how else I, I can call them false Christians who pretend that they are just Torah observant, they are this, that, and the other. But all that they're just doing is just basically milking Western nations of money and Western churches of money and American churches of God of money just for their own for their own benefits. And uh, some of us had that very unpleasant experience to discover very deep corruption. I've been contacted now by uh, uh, an organization the other day. It's an organization that wants to kind of uh, uh, somehow filter through all those organizations and see who is real there in Africa and who is not. And we provided some inf information for them. And also very proud to tell you that as far as Hope of Israel is concerned, we are well recognized by one African government. It's a government of a very small, beautiful nation of Malawi. And um, the, the, the greatest uh, certificate, if you want, or the greatest recognition we could all uh, was that the government of Malawi registered us on the 9th of May of this year with a observation, these people from the Hope of Israel, these people are true Christians. 
uh, I could not really get any better. I mean, true Christians in a sense of our example, in the sense of how we conduct ourselves, in a sense that when they had recently uh, one of those natural disasters, one of the uh, one of those tornadoes. So they always have those silly names, and I always, I always remember. I always forget what name it was there, but it was a tornado that that hit Malawi, and even though we were not very numerous there, we led by the government, we just uh, provided relief as quickly as we could. And the government of Malawi is uh, very happy with us being there, so they granted us the uh, the uh, recognition as soon as we asked to be recognized as a registered organization. And they told us, you are real Christians. Because the government of Malawi, they do have all kinds of uh, nominal Christians there, you know, from Catholics to Protestants and so on. And um, they've granted us this wonderful recognition. And there is nothing, there is nothing for for true Christians. I mean, true Christians who really follow uh, follow the Messiah. There is, I think, there is no greater recognition than to be labeled as true followers of their Messiah. And so uh, we are very honored by that, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to uh, spread the good, solid Bible-based knowledge uh, of. Uh, of the Torah observant, you know, Christians and the true identity of our Messiah, who is not against the Torah. You know, on contrary, he said he came to confirm the law. He lived it to give us an example how to live it. And uh, we continue to march forward. These are things you did not know in the last few months, but now, since you do, <laughs> now you do know them, and now you can pray for our further success and for us to uh, to endure to the end. You know, because yes. we have to endure so many things. Uh, there, you know, there are people who hate us, especially those who are corrupted in Africa. They've some of them vowed to destroy hope of Israel and so on. Of course, we are not afraid of that. We know that if we are not of God, nothing will work. Whatever is of God will uh, will survive. But in any case, uh, we have now forces in the world against the Torah, against the true God's way of life against the Bible after all. You see there are people talking about banning the Bible or removing the Bible from their libraries, you know, because there's so many, I don't know, horrible things in the Bible they say and so on, because they don't, they misunderstand the word of God anyway. And, uh, you know, there's a whole, this movement now of uh, anti, how can we call it? Anti, anti-way, anti, anti, uh, uh, anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-everything that has anything to do with biblical morality. So we have to endure, and it's not very easy. At times, we all get discouraged, of course. But um, then we remember that the sufferings of the present age are nothing compared to the glory that God has designed for Israel, the house of Israel, and for all of us within the house of Israel, and then we continue marching. But brethren, so brethren, Things are moving forward. There are things happening very, they're very encouraging indeed. So be, 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 be encouraged. Uh, I have a friend from Croatia. He's a kind of a, he has no Jewish origin, but he's a kind of a messianic kind of, messianic Jewish kind of, has got messianic Jewish inclination anyway. And he went recently to Sweden. Let me give you just one example of how things sometimes work out. He fell in love with a Swedish girl and he went to Sweden and now he's been in Sweden for several months and then occasionally he would just write to me how things are in Sweden and he admires how they've uh, they've got certain regulations in their society. Of course, I'm not surprised because if you know anything about Sweden, you know, the Swedish people are descendants of the House of Israel, right? The descendants of the, the, of the uh, tribe of Naphtali. Right. And uh, anyway, and then he, so he just writes me, you know, he would just say how hunting is not really permitted. You can hunt perhaps uh, a limited amount of prey and you can hunt, it's all, you know, very controlled. There is there is a control in society, how much Swedish people love recreation and, and sports and all of that. And then all of a sudden he says, because we communicated quite extensively and he does know what we believe. And he says, uh, look at the emblem of the ancient Swedish kings. He sends me the emblem, the coat of arms. The coat of arms. And you know what is on the coat of arms? <laughs> Gee, do you know this? It's a doe. I bet. <laughs> it's a doe. Oh, really? Okay, right. it's a doe. Remember what it says for the Naphtali? 
yes, uh, that's the, right. Yeah, the, the uh, yes. Genesis 49 and the blessing of their father Jacob. Yes. Left lies like a dough. And there it is, yep. dough. And I've got it. I've got those coat of arms and I quickly shared it with all my friends. And I think I, I shared it on, 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 on Facebook as well. Dough, friends. Another proof of where the Israelites are. Yes. You cannot hide. <laughs> you cannot it, hide. And you cannot tell me, oh, they just disappeared. Oh, really? So somebody poured out a vanish and they just vanished away as if they've never existed. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, Swedish people are descendants of Naftali. And I, I've known that for decades now. But uh, my friend, my friend Broker Yadrievich, who is now there from Croatia, sent me that coat of arms. And of course, he sent it to me because he knew what I would say. I said, uh, I said, do you think this is, oh no, he says, I know what it is, I remember. And so we have a dough, and then he says that the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Jewish star, so-called Jewish star, or the, or the star of David, is very present everywhere in, in Sweden. And this is, listen to this one. This is interesting. The seven cases menorah, which is, you know, uh, as we know the, today, it's the, uh, it's the greatest symbol of the Jewish people. Menorah, kind of menorah, some kind of menorah, yeah. it's like a very popular item among the Swedish people. Some, something like a decoration around the house. Ah. So many Swedes have got, yes, many Swedes have got those, those things. And, uh, you know, seven, they've got menorahs as a decoration. And he writes to me, Borko writes to me and says, what do you think? Where did they get it from? <laughs> well, I said, he said, of course they had to get it from, from Israel and from Jerusalem. They couldn't have gotten it from Rome. Of course not. He also right. tells me that they were much, very much anti-Catholic. That uh, they would say, uh, yeah. that's very interesting because they would, uh, he says, you know, uh, uh, as he communicates with them and and, 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 and in some, uh, when it comes to certain rites or rituals, whatever, they would just say, oh, they would just, oh, they would just say, oh, it's Roman Catholic. They would just dismiss it as something irrelevant. So they're very much anti, anti-Catholic. Uh, as you probably know, uh, basically all the Scandinavian nations have turned into some kind of Protestant kind of religion. Right. But this, uh, as we know, Protestants have joined Catholics now in the ecumenical effort to unify. Yes all so-called Christian world, so therefore, but it's interesting that with the Swedish people, they still have this awareness of being much different in their tradition from Roman Catholics. That's very interesting. So I've learned about Sweden some things, and then I say to him, look, I said, uh, do you think we can do a favor to Swedish people? I said, can we just write like leaflets, uh, articles in Swedish about the origin of Swedish people? And we can perhaps, you know, update them on some other things, <laughs> like, right. on, like on who is Constantine the Great, you know, the, 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 oh, the yes. father of the modern Christianity, <laughs> so-called Christianity, because I'm writing still, I'm still writing my Facebook, oh, uh, not my Facebook, my, my, little, my little booklet on Constantine the Great, and I'm a bit stuck because I've got so much, so much work, we had to organize this uh, Hope of Israel, plus we... Plus, I'm having a, 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 how can I call it, the uh, blitzkrieg of, of, of cat fleas, you know, because the cat fleas somehow, somewhere were hiding and all of a sudden, all of a sudden I have a, I have a whole explosion of cat fleas all over the place. So I'm fighting that as well. And uh, Constantine is there. Constantine is there waiting for, well, the, the, the core of the work is done. I just want to add a few more details there. And so on. I'm just amazed, and this is probably the case for, or reality for other nations as well. It's just amazing how much people don't know about that man. All that people know about Constantine the Great. I'm speaking now about the Serbian historians. Oh, Constantine the Great and his Milan Edict of Milan, and he allowed uh, uh, toleration, uh, tolerance for Christians, and uh, he gave them freedom and all that. Okay, that's what most historians believe. Uh, now, of course, the Serbian nation, as usually, they would just go uh, a bit further than that. So because he gave us, you know, freedom and tolerance, let's just defy him and make him a saint, you know. So that's what the Serbian people have done with Constantine the Great. And uh, the 3rd of June is the, is the date when they celebrate him as a saint. Now, there's nothing saintly about Constantine anyway. 
<laughs> but anyway, you know, that's Serbian people are just perfect to take something negative and then perfect it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, take something and then make a perfection in, 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 in doing whatever. A few months ago, we had the fir for the first time, we had a shooting in public. Uh, a young lad, age 14, came into, the, into his school and shot several of his schoolmates and uh, history teacher. That was the first time, something that happened for the first time in, in, in Serbia. A day later, a day or two later, another young lad took a gun and just went around and, and then shot several people in several villages. Uh, those things are not, they're much, much perhaps common in America and elsewhere, but not, not in Serbia. And uh, my first comment was uh, that we are getting what we have sown for a long time, you know. For a long time, this, this society in which we live and societies around the world have been sowing violence. Violence right. and violence. Homemade violence, school violence, everywhere violence. And then now, now it exploded, you know. Interesting enough, right. the, uh, at that time, Minister of Education said, oh, here we've got America now, here now. I said, you, I said, you silly one. You silly one, just you better resign, which he did. He resigned later. Uh, a few days later, but uh, they blame America. It's it's amazing how people blame somebody else, not themselves. You know, they blame. You know, so America was blamed for kind of uh, blamed for setting example for these people. Well, that's silly because the only thing that we have from America here are those violent video games that the uh, the government of Serbia allows to be downloaded from internet. So why? Well, what is America guilty of that anyway? But anyway, the society was up in evil, you know, oh, oh, what, what happened, what's happening to us, where are we going to, what's going on with us? Well, that's what we're going with us, I said. Of all the voices in this nation, I was the only one who said, people, we need to repent and return to God. And nobody else did, you know, there they were all kinds of experts parading on TV, on, you know, trying to comfort nation, explain why this happened, all this and the other. In the meantime, I'm thinking how hypocritical you are. We have all known that there is uh, there are bullies in schools. We have, you know, uh, uh, several several years ago, or several decades ago, everybody tolerated uh, violence, you know, in 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 in, in homes, in marriages, you know, because the husband was supposed to be, you know, a man. You know what I mean? Right. You're supposed right. to be a man and whatever, and 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 you know, we all, you know, we have grown up with all of that rubbish. And then, you know, here are these video games being being available to all the world, not only to Americans. And so, I, you know, I thought it was so hypocritical, but it, it, once again, the human nature comes to mind, you know. Human nature always blames somebody else. It's not to me, you know, it's, you know, it's Americans. Oh, it's not us, it's somebody. No, of course it's us. So I was the only one who was boldly who raised a voice in this nation and told them, it's our sins. And I said, Let, look, lest we repent, lest we repent nationally, it's going to get worse. It's going to be, we're going to see this happening again and again. And uh, I'm the only one who keeps calling people to repentance in this nation. And my, my might be a few voices in the world calling you once again, all of you people around the world to repent if you want to see anything better in this short life that we still have to live. And if you want to have eternal life, we have to repent from all these wrong ways. There is no other way. You have to repent because God created us and gave us instruction book called the Bible, how to live. He didn't give us the Bible to twist it, kick it and stuff. Oh, yes. And uh, during the day of Pentecost, Gene, uh, we had, uh, that's another piece of historical information. Uh, the, we don't know how many people here in, in our part of Europe, kept Pentecost or kept the, uh, the we know that the Bogomils from, from, from this area did keep the Ten Commandments, we know that. We don't know if they kept the, the feasts of Jehovah, the feasts of the Lord. But in any case, during the Pentecost, uh, I, I had a message and I, <laughs> I used one of your favorite <laughs> lines <laughs> uh, to take a Bible and just rip off the Old Testament because it's unimportant. We don't need it. So let's just rip it off and, you know, <laughs> and burn it up if we could because we are New Testament Christians, supposedly. 
and of course, and I said, uh, try to do it. And I said, try to subtract all the, try to try to delete all the quotes from the Old Testament in the New, and you'll see what's what's re what what remains of the New Testament, a bunch of stupidities that you do not understand. Yes, and, yes. You know, Yes, it's, we it's have, mostly commentary on the old. That's right. Yes, yes, exactly. That's really what it is. Yeah, yeah. We usually, sometimes it's commentary on those verses of the Old Testament, explaining what the reality yes. is. You know? Exactly, and that's like you said. That's why, and I wish more people would realize this. That's why Yeshua came. He came to be our exemplar. Exactly. He came, he came to live the life that we're supposed to live. Exactly. He didn't come to to what. Nailed to the cross, the law of God. Yeah. And, and I, he didn't come to be uh -huh. worshipped either. He of course He didn't come to be no. worshipped, you know. And he yeah, always said, right. don't pray to me, pray to the Father in right. heaven. Don't, you know, look yeah. into the Father who sent me, you know, just, you know, you right. see me, you see the Father. The Father is the, the, father is the, 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 the point, not I. But right, of course people, exactly. People, all right. You know, what I said, uh, I said back in Pentecost, and, and, I, and in several of my messages in Serbian, well, this Christianity has made God a um, uh, 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 what's was the diagnosis in, in in medicine uh, a double person, you know, or um, uh, I can't remember. But he's like a schizophrenic, you know. He gave he gives a moral oh, yeah. law <laughs> which gives us life in uh, to one group of people, the Old Testament, Old Testament Israelites, and then he comes into the New Testament, a totally new, different God who says, "No, you don't need that law. You know, it's a curse. It's a terrible." He's schizophrenic, isn't it? So this Christianity has created God as schizophrenic God, and and we have right. all of these schizophrenic, uh, maniacal stupidities that modern Christianity has done to God and to people of God, which is Israel. That no wonder that many young people just reject religion yes. altogether. They want to read it. Of course they don't. Right? And who in the world is wants to to serve a schizophrenic God? I mean, you know, as a phenomenon of today is that this modern Christianity uh, created God or turned God into a schizophrenic. Schizophrenic right. gives a slight set of laws, you know, to one group of people at one point of time. And then, you know, a few, few centuries later, he comes and says, oh, no, this law you don't need. This is a curse. This is bad. This is really, you're free now, free. And I'm giving you a Messiah who has just freed you from all the... All this law. Well, it says in Psalms that the law converts the soul. <laughs> you know, so friends, right? right. Friends, without and you the know law the, of the God. implication. The implication is that he didn't do it right the first time. Right. That's the craziness of it. You That's know, I'm sorry, but he's thing. perfect. How can a perfect God not do things right? <laughs> oh, come on. Right. Please. Exactly. And how can I he? Agree. How can his his pitiful image, his reflection, Jesus Christ? How could he? A perfect reflection of him, of, 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 of God the Father. How could he in the world ever abolish the law that is the basically the dynamic force in relations between the two, in that family family relationship anyway? And, and, and after all, without the law, what kind of family relationship we would have one with another? And after the law, how will we know how to serve God, the true God of Israel? Friends... Friends, just just please disconnect from all of this stupidity and all, all, all of this morbidity of the modern Christianity. Friends, if you have something in you telling you there is wrong, it is wrong. If you have something in you telling you your identity is not what you think it is, you were born with. I'm not talking about transgenderism and all that rubbish. I'm just talking about <laughs> your spiritual yes. identity. Yes, Friends, if right. you realize you're different and there is a reason for that. There must be a reason. Perhaps it's called from the eternal for you to return to who you are. And many right. of you are Israelites. Israelites, friends, even by the even by, by the flesh. But you know, many of us who are not perhaps many of those who are not Israelites directly, well, they become Israelites the moment they turn to the God of Israel. And the moment they become true followers of Yeshua, the true followers of Jesus Christ, they become you know, Abraham's seed, Abraham's children, and he's the father of all the faithful. So here we are. And it's time to finally wake up to our identity and realize why all these years many of you feel you're so different. You don't fit into the culture. You don't fit into the national this, that, and the other. Well, you don't because you are somebody else. 
because you might be Israelites indeed. And it is very interesting what we are finding in these last days. In these last days, we have found all of a sudden you, you see uh, uh, something new, a new, uh, a new something found in in in, in cosmos, in, in 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 space. What was it? It was uh, uh, I can't remember what it was, but something else. There is something. That, then we have the proton neutrons. Well, another spectacle was 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 found as well, uh, smaller than proton, I think. And then you have uh, excavation. I don't know. All of a sudden, found a coin from the time of King David. Then all of a sudden, found what was found. Uh, something else in Egypt was found. The uh, the uh, something with with to do with their with their pharaohs. All the time we have we have new knowledge popping up. The the the, uh, uh, the prophet Daniel says that knowledge will increase. Knowledge keeps increasing all the time. And isn't it interesting? Isn't it yes. interesting that, that as the end approaches, the amount of knowledge being discovered keeps getting stronger and faster and stronger. Stronger and faster. And faster. We're just amazed. Every yes. almost every day there is a news, a piece of news telling us that something was discovered, right. something was understood, something was excavated, something was popped out, out of nowhere. Friends, it's right. all true. But you know what is the most important knowledge among all those things? Is the knowledge of who you are. There is nothing more important in your life than right. to know who you are. When you know who you are, then you know where you fit. Then you know who your God is. Then you know who right. is your national ident identity and your national, primarily your national history. It's all written in the scriptures, friends. And it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing, all this track. And the other day, Gene and I were talking about something that uh, happens now in, in Asia. Uh, we have I have a friend Margot Crossing from Australia. Yes. She's a lady that is involved very heavily into uh, discovering and studying uh, all the various coincidences between uh, Israelites, ancient Israelites, and the modern various tribes of Asia. You would be absolutely blown apart to hear that. That's right. That's the fact. Blown apart. And uh, one tribe, for example, just to give an example, there is a tribe of Karen tribe from Burma or Myanmar, uh, they are refugees, most of them, many of them are now refugees because of the bloody civil war in uh, in Burma or Myanmar, yes. but nevertheless, that current tribe, uh, uh, Margot and others have, have found, have got so many similarities to lost Israelites, and they are not the only ones. You would be absolutely flabbergasted, blown apart, friends, to know that we don't even know how many people or how many people in Asia claim to be related to the House of Israel. Uh, I'll speak about, uh, we wanted to talk to you about Japan, because you'll be absolutely now flabbergasted and blown apart to hear what what is there in Japan. But let me, before that, let me, um, let me just tell you that there is a, in the, uh, in the state of, uh, in the state of Manipur, which is the northeast state in India, uh, mostly populated by the yellow race people, and uh, Hindus is not Hinduism is not the main religion. Uh, the main religion is the uh, is the uh, nominal Christianity. Sixty percent of Manipur population are Baptists, uh, and there are others. However, in the in that state, uh, there is a, a small population of followers of Jesus Christ. But nevertheless, they're well, well, well respected. In fact, when I was in Manipur, how many now? It's now two, three years ago. Uh, I visited a group of those people there, lovely people, where I ordained a deacon and deaconess. Uh, interesting enough, the deacon, the deacon was uh, something what would be a minister. Uh, he would be, he would be the vice minister of, 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 of uh, vice minister of. Uh, how do you call it? Capital, uh, capital investments. I think you would call it in, in in your in your society. And the lady, his wife, she was she became minister of education. That's how much trust those people wow. those people enjoyed because of their way of life and because of being honest people of integrity. Uh, at the same time, I'm aware that in that very state of Manipur, there is a, a group of people called who believe that they are descendants of the tribe of Manasseh. Now, uh, interesting enough, just like we uh, from the Ten Tribes, just like we have been 
uh, discovering and getting aware of our identities. Uh, there is a non-government uh, organization in Israel uh, headed by a man called Michael Freund. And uh, what his goal is, and the goal of his organization, organization is called, by the way, Shave Israel. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Shave Israel, and Shave Israel is uh, involved in discovering crypto Jews. Those would be the descendants of the, those Jews who had to convert to Catholicism in order to save their lives. Uh, and many of them come from uh, Portugal and Spain. Yes. Many of them also emigrated, you know, from Portugal and Spain into South America. And you've got all colonies of them in, in Colombia, in El Salvador, uh, and etc., etc. Uh, some of them also live even in Italy, and some of them live even in Poland. And uh, this Chavez Israel uh, brings uh, monthly update on all of their activities and various things. Michael Front has given... Uh, himself a task to teach those people about the Jewish observances and so on so that they can return to their true identity. Well, that's exactly what Gene and I, our program is doing. You know, we are counting, counting to the restoration of the kingdom of Israel, which is at the same time the kingdom of God. And we're trying to restore you to uh, your, to the way, Her yeah. to, your, to your heritage. To your heritage, yeah. exactly. Yeah. To who you are, friends. Uh, with all this knowledge in the world, yes, it's very important and relevant, but nothing is more important to you personally, to each one of you, than to know who you are. And why are you here? And what is your destiny, after all? But the destiny is beautiful. Right. The future glory of the house of Israel. Oh, prophesied in, among the, all the Hebrew prophets. Oh, oh my. How many of them, how many of those things you know? But many of you, many of you have related those things wrongly only to the Jewish people. The Jewish people are part of the, you see, House of Israel. And you see, even the Jewish people do have their non-government uh, organization that takes care of that, of discovering them and bringing them back to their heritage. Uh, interesting enough, Michael Freud and I became good friends um, because... Uh, because he found me on Facebook, <laughs> that's how I, but I remember like uh, uh, some time ago, there was a, uh, there was an article in Jerusalem Post, and the uh, article was about Serbian, Serbian current, current Serbian problems with the southern province of Kosovo and so on, and uh, the article was so well written, as if it was written by a Serbian, by somebody who really understands and knows uh, all the ins and outs of all that problem. Uh, but I wrote, I noticed the name, the name was a Jewish name, and it was, of course, it was said that it was, this article was published in Jerusalem Post. Uh, sometime, that would be sometime in 2010. And a couple of, a couple of years later, 2012, I get friend request from a person called Michael Frohn, and he says to me in, uh, in a comment, he says, I admire your work. And I thought, who in the world is this interesting person? <laughs> and I was like, why is this man, why is this name ringing the bell? I've never met, you know, anybody. Like that. And then all right. of a sudden it dawned on me. Oh, come on, come on. Is this a man? Because I realized that when I checked his checked out his biography, Jerusalem Post, I said, oh, there it is. I said, this must be a man who wrote that excellent article about Serbia, very much, very affirmative about Serbia, which is very unusual, as you know, because Serbia is usually maligned by all these all the world for I don't know what reason. Uh, in any case, and I just, so I write, write back to him. He says he admired my work and I was like, oh, I was so honored. I said, uh, I was thinking how in the world, where in the world did he learn about my work? But uh, that's still a mystery. <laughs> and uh, I write back to him and we become good friends over internet. So every time that the Serbian press uh, uh, brings brings and translates something about him from his articles. I usually spread it all over the place so the whole nation can see it. And it happened, you see, and I don't think this is by a chance. I think Eternal <laughs> always has his ways. He just happened in a man who is basically uh, trying to uh, wake up the lost Jews to their identity, becomes my close friend, you know. Uh, wow. My good friend, and I wish I, when I, we were in Jerusalem 2000, back in 2017, Eugene, I wish I, I met him, but there was no time. We were very busy with other right. things. Yeah, and uh, nevertheless, we become good friends, but you see the same uh, process, friends, is going on in the Jewish world. 
In fact, they've got it on, so now with these people from Manipur who claim to be uh, descendants of Manasseh, he has been bringing them in waves to the state of Israel and uh, uh, and basically, uh, what's the word, uh, well, they have a ministry of adoption or whatever, so they just, they're just being adopted I into immigration. Yeah. Immigration, yes. Yeah. They, these 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 people from India are now being adopted and and, and taken in to the state of Israel. They've got you know their settlements now. They just live like Jews, and so you see this, the parallel process is going on with the House of Judah. The House of Judah is you know doing its part to uh, uh, retrieve, we might say, lost Jews. Uh, Jean and I and the Hope of Israel, uh, we do our best. <laughs> To retrieve Israelites all over the place, right. you know, make them aware of their identity and tell them, look, you can live still as Israelites. You can be blessed as Israelites. No matter what you are, where you are, where were you born, who are your parents, or ancestors, there might be, there, there is there's Israel all over the place. So you're Israelites, why don't you return to your God for your own benefits? And well, so you, we know, have, you know, isn't it, uh -huh. isn't it, I don't know how you felt as you were growing up. I know when I was growing up and I was I thought I thought of myself as a Christian and and I thought of myself I realized hold it a second I'm reading scripture I'm reading the Bible the Bible is all about Israel it's not it's it's not about who I think I am I mean I I don't see how I fit so in other words am I supposed to just stand on the sideline and read about these people and right. not be part of it you know cuz why why would these, we be wasting our time reading about somebody else when I want to find out about my life and what I'm supposed to do? Oh, yeah. And, and boy, the day that I came to the realization that I was an Israelite, right. that, that, was an, that was a watershed day in my life. Well, in my in my case, it's a bit different. You see, I grew up as an atheist. <laughs> uh, okay. Because yep. it, we were in atheist communist country anyway. Bible was not very right. real. Well, it was there, but it wasn't really something to be read. But nevertheless, once I came to the age of about twenty and began reading the Bible, at first I didn't realize that it was talking only about not one nation. But over the time, of course, I realized that. And then I heard this funny, funny concussion, really. Oh, there is a spiritual Israel. I'm thinking, what in the world? I don't find that in the Bible at all. Spiritual right. Israel, okay. But yeah, I do. I can understand. I can understand the uh, the context. You know, you may not have any any biological connection to, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So once you, okay, I can understand that connection. But still, it doesn't make much sense, right? Because right. it's all a different, you know. I'm like, wait a second. What, is, what does it mean, spiritual Israel? So... Sometimes back in 2009, I think I began, yes, I was, I was into the book of Hosea and uh, I was studying the book of Hosea and then it just dawned on me, look, you've been Israelite right. all this time. You've been Israelite all these years. You've been Israelite and you didn't get it. You know, right. it, this book speaks about you and uh, you cannot really separate the Bible and Bible knowledge from this key knowledge of who you are. And I was thinking, I said to God, then, okay, I said, everywhere I go, I'll just spread this news about, about Israel. And I, I do. Uh, and now, this year, we've come to the point that uh, me and my friends, several of my friends, we just, uh, as we had to think about who we are and what we do, what we'll do next and what to do next, we came to realization, well, come on, it's hope of Israel, mikveh Israel, as Jeremiah says. And then later he says, all those all those who are not, uh, who, 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 who reject you, uh, the spring of the living water, all of that, all their names will be right, will be written on the earth. Very interesting, because remember that incident in, in, in the gospel when, when he was writing, uh, you, you know, Yeshua was writing something on the ground and all of these others just <laughs> who came to accuse Mary Magdalene, one by one they left, you know. <laughs> right. So it's interesting. Right. I, was, I, I keep thinking about it often. So all those, you know, so those of us who accept the, 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 the God of Israel, then it means we will not, our names are not written on the earth, but as it says there, as it says there uh, in Revelation, uh, there is a book of life. So their names are written in, you know, in heaven. And all those who reject the source of the true living water, they are, their names are written on, on, the, on the ground, it says in, 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 in Jeremiah. 
So that's the, you know, Mikve Israel, the hope of Israel. That's the, 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 the difference between us who are true Israelites, observant Israelites, living the way of life, you know, living Haderic, and the rest who just don't care and just have some other, as it says, broken cisterns, you know. Now look at the world, Gene. Isn't it broken? Of course it's broken. Why is the world broken? Why are your family's friends broken? Why are the nations broken? Because they drink from the broken cisterns. It's not the God of right. Israel. <laughs> as simple as that. Look at this horrible yep. war in Ukraine. I mean, it's now has has gone spilled over in the second year. I'm like, oh my. We just have, uh, lest all of you know, but we just have here, we had the, 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 the inflation between 20 and 40, 42%. Would you believe that? The, the food price skyrocketed. The fuel price is skyrocketed. The government has to... Uh, has to decide every Friday the government comes up with uh, with with the prices of, of gas uh, what will be the prices various prices of gas you know uh, uh, it's it's absolutely crazy I mean the the prices are just have just gone we just and it's it, it's just amazing you know stupid you know uh, stupid war and I was thinking you know why not not why don't they just attack Kiev and then the rest yes. the Zelensky and just finish up with all of this you know because oh because you know we always because every time you think about about any conflict or anything else just go to the beginning you remember how the Apostle John always tells us in the New Testament go to the beginning in the beginning in the beginning in the beginning in the beginning you know and then, well, even Yeshua said, you know, in the beginning it wasn't so, but because of, because of hardness of their heart, you know, this is, so in the beginning, what was in the beginning? Of course, in the beginning, it was the, uh, it was the Russian, the ethnic Russians who were, who were oppressed in, in, in Ukraine, living in areas that used to be Russia, by the way, but the communists, for some reason, you know, in Soviet Union, gave it those areas over to, to Ukraine, like Crimea and Peninsula, and so on. And then the, the, the oppression of the Russians, and then there was the, the Russian, and the Russian government discovers that there was a plan by the Ukrainian regime to make a storm and, and basically basically expel all the Russians from Ukraine. So, you know, this this war began, and... We, I hoped, you know, it would be end by the by the winter, but no, I was wrong, of course. <laughs> I was wrong as always. We always want all those wars to be short. I was wrong as always because when Serbia was bombed in back in 1999, we thought, oh, several days and it'll be over. No, it lasted for three months, and then right. uh, you know this this horrible war just is now spilling over in the second year, and the the, the worst of all is when you think about it. Uh, oh, come on, you know, uh, how come? Some of these Western leaders like European Union and Americans don't get one thing with Russians. Russians are called bears. When you wake up the bear, <laughs> you know what happens? The bear is not going to lose. Russians are people who just do not accept defeat. I, I can't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how to illustrate that to American mind and, and any other mind, you know, Russians just don't accept to be defeated, you know. In the Second World War, their women would just go and bomb the, you know, bomb the Germans on the lines. They would just mobilize the whole society, you know, against the horrible, hated Germans, uh, Nazi Germans, of course. Uh, you know, that's, that's how Russians are. Russians do not accept defeat. So, you know, uh, these Western people are just... Just, just, just sacrificing Ukra Ukraine and Ukrainians, you know, for their own. Well, wait a second. Well, well, what do you want? You know, you beleaguered Russia with with NATO members. You beleaguered Russia, so they lied to Russia anyway. You know, they said that they would never expand NATO close to Russia, but they they lied. So they lied. Then the Ukrainian regime started wanted to 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 to, 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 to commit genocide. You might say. Then all of a sudden, this war starts, and this stupid Western, Western. Uh, Western uh, governments just keep keep basically sacrificing Ukrainians because they they've proclaimed Russia their greatest enemy. You dumb people! Your greatest enemy is right there in the middle of Europe, developing its own uh, its own uh, military. Have you seen how much Olaf Scholz, the German Chancellor, has now cut from the from the German budget for the military? It's never it's never high. It's the highest. A budget giving, you know, for military development ever in German history, wow. and nobody, nobody even pays attention. Silly, you Western yeah. Israelites. And of course, his might wow. is not going to be against Russia, you know. 
Yeah. Like Germans are kind of what Germans are, Germans are just letting they, oh, they have always been doing that. Oh, oh, they've always done it. But Americans never never realized that they always put America to be clown and do dirty work for them. And oh, they're they're they're, they're, oh, they're just they're just observant. So they just want peace for everyone. No Germans. So oh, no, they just. They just observed all this. Oh, what a horrible, sad, sad situation. But uh, well, 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 what can you do? Well, what can you do? They just always put Americans to do dirty work, and Americans always come out as clowns, as clowns and hated yeah. by nations. And Americans always just get away. You know, Germans always get away. And well, we, we, we well, well, it's Americans. You know, we are American allies. We, we, well, well, what could we do? Poor us. Poor us, friends, they're developing their GPS. Friends, they're developing their space program. Friends, they've got budget, highest budget giving for their military ever. And you're going to yep. see the mighty European army very soon. Very soon you're going to see it because sadly, the uh, the, 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 the blind French nation, Reubenites, the descendants of Reuben are so blind because they hate America, England and uh, English predominance and Anglo-Saxon predominance because France had the first world empire was French, by the way, those of you who don't know the history. And then, of course, English, English Commonwealth <laughs> replaced them. So France has always felt this kind of inferiority complex, but now they've got a big brother called Germans whom they embraced. And along with them, France has been advocating European army. Well, who do you think that European army is going to attack? Who? Who? Russia? No, you're wrong. They're going to attack Russia just you know, later. They're going to. You're, you're the main enemy of all the Germans have always been, have always been Israelites. To ancient Israel uh, Assyrians, it was Israelites. To these modern Assyrians, because that's who they are, Germans. You know, the modern Israelites. And who are the modern Israelites? Well, you Anglo-Saxon nations, you silly doves, an unturned cake, yeah. as the Book of Hosea describes you. The foreigners eating your power. And you're just allow it. When I was in Australia several months ago, people just told me they're just the, the foreigners. They keep Australian government allows foreigners to come in. The Australian farmers are being destroyed. And now the Australian government wants to give even the voting power to those foreigners. Stupid. How stupid can you be? Look at Paris. Look at Paris, the capital of, of, of France. Once uh, a pride of all the nations, Paris. A city of love and stuff. You should see how dirty and 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 backward it is now, because it's full of those so-called immigrants. It's full of those immigrants who have destroyed it. Paris is not what it used to be. It used to be one of the most uh, loved tourist destination. Now, when you, if at least when I talk to various Serbians, they just say, "Oh, don't Paris, just avoid it." You know, it's nothing like what it used to be. It's dirty and backward and dangerous and horrible. I said, "What?" That sounds like America. That exactly. Sounds like, that exactly. sounds like San Francisco. Sounds like New York York San Francisco and probably some other places there. Yeah. Horrible. Oh yeah. And you're supposed to be the greatest Christian nation in the world. That's what you believe. Yes. Shooting almost every day. We have shooting on the streets, shooting on the shooting, the crimes, the crime rate. You call yourselves Christians, Americans. Look at the crime rate in your country. Exceeds everybody else's crime rate. Horrible. Right. You're being on decline yeah. all the time. And the worst and the pinnacle of your decline will be to lose just it what it happened in, in the Old Testament. You will lose your own country and you're going to be captive. And you're going to be serving foreign gods and foreign nations whom you did not know. Of course you did not know. Yes, you knew French and Germans, but you never knew about the European nation and European Union. Here it is. And it's building its own army, you silly people. Who do you think that that army is going to attack? And what do you think that army is going to be busy doing, you know, in few, 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 few years down the road? It's going to be keeping the concentration camps for you, Dumb people, you're just obsessed with your with your uh, how do you call how do you call those detention centers that Americans are so obsessed with? Uh, uh, I can't remember the uh, you're obsessed obsessed with your domestic whatever. Suppose no, you'll be dragged away from your country. You'll be dragged away to other places, and you'll be slaves in other nations. What was yes. the name of those? Uh, I, I I'm trying to oh, remember. Like, are you not talking about concentration camps? Yes, about, yes, yes. They think about okay. those buildings that military will supposedly Pentagon will use for yeah. its citizens. But no, you're wrong. You're terribly wrong, people. 
you're wrong because the Bible says something else. But people don't want to listen to the Bible. The Bible is like a, a quaint, a quaint ancient book that nobody cares about. Really? Well, you'll be caring about it a few years down the road when you find yourself in various foreign places. Yeah, fulfilling and somebody, it. Hopefully those two witnesses right. will tell you about yes. Leviticus, Leviticus 19, the pivotal prophecy that will just exactly outlines all that you'll be experiencing in those foreign nations. Terrible. Yes. We already had several broadcasts, so I'm not going to elaborate on that. Gene and right. I have given you enough, enough uh, uh, warning, and uh, yes. perhaps it's never enough, but you know, uh, we have given you enough warning you can always refer to and, 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 and hear. And hear, and hopefully some of you, hopefully some of you wake up even now. Many of you will wake up sadly when it'll be it'll be much different. Many of you will wake up, but keep in mind it's still not too late. It's never too late to return to your God. Your God keeps waiting for you with open arms. Your God has been dying to see you. Your God is the one, the one from the story of the two of the prodigal son. You know, right. here's the father on the road waiting, you know, to lift up your, your, your garments and run. It was an extreme shame in the Jewish culture, by the way. And that's what exactly what you, what you read in that, in that story. He just runs to the son who is lost. Oh, lost Israelites. How much you're just lost in your wrong ways. And you wonder why nothing is, why nothing is working out in our lives. Well, because you are, because you're ignoring the most important knowledge you must have in your life. And the most important knowledge is who you are. That's how we right. always remember, how we always finish and close with this program. So remember who you are. Remember who you are because that's the most important knowledge that, that may mean perhaps even life and death. I don't know. It might. It may not. But uh, it's important. What else could be more important than who you are? Your identity, right. you know. Well, what else? The other day I just found somebody, somebody's profile was saying, I'm a Hebrew. I'm a Hebrew. I'm Israelite. I was like, wow, this is beautiful. So I just, <laughs> I just shared it right away. And I just added, and I'm not ashamed of it. Why should I be ashamed of being a Hebrew and Israelite? Why? You tell me why. You tell me why should I be ashamed of that? Well, what shall I be? Shall I be, uh, what should I be uh, proud of? Of all the paganism of the world? Well, today is one of the greatest pagan holidays in, in my nation. Now, sadly, on this very day, you should, uh, this is what the public perhaps should know, is on this very date, uh, which is, well, it's, <laughs> this day is uh, devoted to a deity, anyway, vid, the deity that sees, you know, sees, everything becomes clear in any way, there is a deity uh, seeing, let's call it that way. But in any case, on this very date, in uh, 1389, there was a huge, gigantic, giant battle of Kosovo that happened between the Turks and the uh, medieval Serbians. Serbia was, was, was basically divided into small counties and then all of those various uh, local, uh, local, uh, how can we call them, big heads decided to kind of somehow uh, uh, collect their peasants together and they just went to uh, resist the Turkish, the Ottoman Empire army. Just imagine the Ottoman Empire. I mean, imagine an empire with an army like that. Uh, and uh, the Ottoman Empire really didn't want to take Serbia, but he wanted to go to Austro-Hungarians. He wanted to go to Vienna and take Vienna and basically, you know, conquer Europe. That was their goal. But of course, Serbian pride, what else? Serbian pride was there. How could we allow uh, conquerors of any sort to pass through our country without any resistance, you know? Oh, we have to resist. Right. So, of course, they just all got together. Of course, they were... Uh, they were a much a smaller army than what the Ottoman Empire was. And nevertheless, in this heroic battle, nobody knows who really won. Actually, the Ottomans won. But uh, nevertheless, the Ottomans were stopped on their march to Vienna. They were stopped for about several months after that battle before they, uh, before they reorganized and stuff. And, 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 and those few months proved to be crucial for the Austrians and other Europeans. So they also reorganized and, and, and prepared for the battle much better. And that's when the, you know, when, uh, when the Ottomans finally reached Vienna, they lost. But nevertheless, you know, this battle of Kosovo is now raised to mythological levels in Serbian nation. And, uh, and, 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 and there is nothing, 
I, I, I don't think there is nothing. Well, this 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 holiday, as a holiday, celebrated without without joy. It's celebrated in sadness, because you know some would say uh, Serbia won. Obviously not. The Turks say that they won. So in any case, but anyway, the the, the day itself is dedicated to one of the ancient Slavic deities. You know, and uh, what shall I be proud of? Shall I be proud of paganism? Shall I be proud of pagans who sacrifice their children to Moloch and sacrifice it to Baal? Is that what we are supposed to be proud of? And that's sadly what the modern Christianity celebrates, my dear friends. Easter and Christmas. And you all know that, oh, it's well-known fact already. Nobody can now deny it. Everybody knows that Jesus Christ was not born on, 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 on Christmas. And certainly all of you have heard that Easter, just by the name, Oestre, Easter, Easter, you just know by the name, it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. And and, and, and when, with, with any anything that has any, any connection with Christianity. And that's what the modern Christianity celebrates. Pure, sheer paganism. On the days on which pagans, ancient pagans, sacrifice their children, their firstborn children to their deities. What about Sunday? Sunday, just the name of it just shows you what it is. Are we supposed to be proud of paganism? Well, if you want to be proud of it, fine, be. I'm not going to be part of that. No, I don't want to be proud of pagan Sunday and pagan Christmas and pagan Easter and all the other paganism that is just uh, interwoven so so into this modern Christianity that is just people just find it so hard to uh, 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 distinguish the truth from the error because it, it is amazing the level of deception, the level of 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 uh, the level of education that made people incapable of distinguishing the right from wrong, especially when it comes to religious fear. It's absolutely, absolutely un unbelievable what the Church of Rome has done to, to this world, what the Church of Rome has done to uh, falsify the true Christianity. What the, there's so many things we can talk about from the fact that uh, Peter, St. Peter is not there in, 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 in the Vatican. Those are the remains of Simon Magus to the, um, to your name, to, 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 to the, uh, 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 you know, uh, body of Christ. When when these Christians of all of all sorts take these these Eucharist and stuff, Eucharist is just is just a uh, falsified form version perversion, if you wish, of true of true uh, uh, Passover. By the way, speaking of the Passover, Gene, I'm not sure if I told you and our friends, but uh, another achievement we Israelites have have done in the last several months is that the, for the first time in history of Serbia, a booklet on the true Passover um, emerged in Serbian language. All oh, right, in the Serbian yes. language. In Serbian I language. Mean, you're, you're, you were single-handedly bringing Serbia into this understanding. Oh, of course I am. Well, with the help of a few, few loving, loving friends, we had another miracle that really happened. Uh, there was a Serbian guy who contacted me and said, uh, am I allowed to give you any donation, he said. Because he said, I realize all that you're doing must be must must cost some money. And uh, and he said, uh, you know, I'll just I'll just want to give that donation. And you can just use that money as you see fit. Well, wow. I said, it's not I said, it's not forbidden. And that was the first time in our history that Serbian person would do that. And the guy the, the amount of money that he sent, I fainted the first his first donation <laughs> and ever since late yeah. you know you know in all the uh, in all the months that that followed he would send always a certain uh, he would always send certain amount uh, so I presume in fact he began tithing you know giving wow. tithe in the tenth of his of his his he realized obviously that tithing was very important and right. uh, not long after after his offer to help and send donation he was able to secure him himself a flat which is not very easy in Serbia these days. He got his own flat and he invited me to come. And I asked him, I said, do you want, do you want me to dedicate it to the God of Israel? Oh, yes, he said. I didn't know it was possible. <laughs> well, I said, look, <laughs> if pagans can dedicate their flats and everything else to their <laughs> pagan deities, why shouldn't we Israelites do the same? So I did it. We dedicated it to the God of Israel. And then I said to have a conversation with him. Very, very pleasant fellow he was. 
And of course, as soon as you find it pleasant, you you, you can kind of sense why that is because of who he is. And I said, how, yes. how, did, you, how did you find us? Oh, he said, you know what? He said, I ran across your teachings on, <laughs> listen to this one, the tribes of Israel, he said. And he said that led me to listen to everything else and to begin reading the Bible. Wow. Oh, See, and, and, and look at look at the blessings that he's experienced. And look at the blessings that I said. I said yes. at, first, at first I was like, I said, yes, yes, yes. I'm like, oh, finally, finally, it started happening in this country. People are waking up to their identity, you know. But I said to myself, just keep quiet, you silly one. It's God who does it all. <laughs> so you yeah. were just an instrument and then nothing else. But that's exciting. Anyway, he was, that's exciting. So... Uh, He's now he's now keeping the. Uh, at first, he told me he wanted he wasn't sure about keeping the Sabbath and holidays, but then, uh, you know, Sabbath after Sabbath, he he is now basically he is there, so he is making it. I'm not pushing anything. I'm just there to be a helper of the joy and to teach people the right way. And that's it. The rest is up to the people. But anyway, uh, yes, I'm bringing all this knowledge to Serbia. So uh, it was in March. Sometime in March. Yes, I think it was March. We had this. Uh, we had for the first time in the history of Serbia, for the first time, the first uh, textbook ever on the topic of true uh, Passover appeared. And I'm now working on this topic of, uh, <laughs> of on, on the topic of Constantine the Great, who was born in Serbia. Just to read to you how blind this world is, I'm keeping here in my hand now the National Review, Serbia National Review. It's a review that brings news from all various parts of Serbia and various... Uh, uh, tourist destinations and so on and this was this is this is a review from some years back from 2013 and it was between one hundred uh, 1700th uh, uh, anniversary of the edict of milan so the cover page our friends cannot see it but i'm going to see the cover page has got this statue of constantine the great with his wow. huge eyes he has a huge light eyes like a like a wild wild owl you know Anyway, well, and then uh, didn't he depict himself? <laughs> didn't he depict himself as the sun god, basically? Oh yes, basically yes, because yeah. he believed he kept to, to the end of his life. He kept this uh, pagan uh, title, Pontifex Maximus, which means the wow. uh, the uh, the head of all the pagans. And yes, he depicted he he uh, identified himself basically like sun god. Yes, but his ugly face wow. just shows something else. But then. Uh, then, uh, so this cover says 1,700 uh, 1, years of Edict of Milan, and listen to the title of this article, The Man Who Baptized Europe. Oh my. The Man Who Baptized Europe. That's what uh -huh. it says. Ah, in Serbian, of course, in Cyrillic. Friends, the man who baptized Europe, he basically baptized Europe in paganism, and the man who baptized you baptized you to sun-worshipping uh, cult and that sun worshiping cult of Europe got spread all over the place, all over, all over the world, all over the world. And all of you who are still uh, receiving all of those so called Christian missionaries, you're just accepting the cult, the sun cult. Friends, please, right. please, please wake up, especially if you're Israelites and many of you are everywhere, whoever you are, just wake up, wake up, and just, just, just understand. The whole world lies in in, in, in in error, and the whole world, because of this error, this this curse, this constant in the great brought is, is now upon the whole world basically. And I had to write first the uh, book book on uh, Passover because he is the one who dared, who dared to actually uh, abolish the Passover and institute what the whole world today celebrates as Easter. Horrendous, absolutely horrendous, yes. absolutely horrendous. Anyway, so after finishing with Constantine, I promised something else to the Serbian audience, and it will be entitled something like the uh, the violent uh, the violent subversion of the Christian day of life of the Christian day of rest. Sorry, what do you say? Violent subversion of the Christian day of rest. And what is the Christian day of rest? Ah. What a good question, friends. What well, Jesus Christ says in, uh, was it in Mark chapter 2? And I am the, I am the Lord of the, what? Of Sunday, of Monday, of Tuesday, of Wednesday. No, 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 no. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I am the Lord of the Shabbat. Sunday. Oh, of Shabbat. Right. right. 
That's the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Hello, hello. Anybody there? Anybody at home? Hello, he lost Israelites. That's the Messiah. That's the God. That's the one who followed the Israelites, as it says in First Corinthians chapter ten. That was the rock that followed Israelites through the wilderness. So, hello, hello. The uh, Shabbat covenant. Shabbat covenant was is right there in Exodus. Go and re look for it. Shabbat was there established between God and his people forever. Forever for all generations. Right. And right. uh, so the true day of rest is indeed Shabbat. You, uh, the thing is from the history we know that for a long time, uh, these churches on the east, uh, all these so-called Orthodox churches on the east, even the ones in the Copts in Egypt, the Ethiopian church, the church in, in, in Armenia, Serbia, Georgia, Russia, Greece, Cyprus, they all kept Shabbat. They all kept Shabbat and they were the last ones that lay they just sometimes around I would think I think about it would be about fourth century, I would think they just they just uh, s s slipped into Sunday. Well, Ethiopian church held out until the eighth century. <laughs> did you know? Of course you didn't, but did you know that until the eighth century, the official day arrest of Ethiopia was Shabbat. Wow. Now, of course, nobody knows that, but the history tells us about that. So, uh, and what we have here in Serbia, uh, the Serbian Orthodox, these Orthodox churches, every Saturday afternoon, they do have a liturgies, you know. And when I kind of inquired a little bit about it, they said, well, that's because just to, uh, to be reminded that we used to keep Shabbat. Oh, I said. Well, why did you stop? Oh well, because because they believe that Jesus Christ rose up on Sunday. Oh, he he resurrected. He was you know he 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 came back to life on Sunday. So that's why you keep Sunday. Well, that's not true. He came back to life on Shabbat, but that's another topic. But yes. in any case, all these Eastern churches kept Shabbat, and exactly. uh, that means that our ancestors here in Serbia kept Shabbat. That's very interesting. But nevertheless, do we have this violent? violent uh, subversion of the Christian day of rest. Christ said he is the Lord of the Shabbat. So Shabbat is the true Christian day of rest. Ha! Yes. What a surprise. And now we have to inform the Serbian, Serbian uh, public, or at least those who are interested, what is the true Christian day of rest? Just like we informed them what happened with the Christ Passover and how it became Easter. Anyway, so yes, I'm, I'm doing what I can do in Serbia. Not just by myself. Yeah, there are a few other people. Uh -huh. There's about ten of us. Uh, ten of us, kind of actively, more or less, who are just there. Five are immersed and five are not. But nevertheless, the, I'm very happy that they're still faithful and holding out. Serbia has plenty of problems. Very, very uh, unique. Very unique to what you see in the Western world. You know, Serbia has problem with 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 with, with employment. Serbia has problem with. With the law not being even the good laws not being really respected in reality, Serbia has problem with private, you know, uh, business owners who just can who lay you off if you don't want to work on the Sabbath or on holidays, God's holidays, and so on. So Serbia has various problems, but uh, I said, as now being the presiding elder of the Hope of Israel, I said to all of the believers, whatever happens. Whatever sacrifice it will take, we have to make it for one another, and we must ensure that nobody would end up on the street without food, without clothing, without lodging because of his faith or her faith. We must not right. allow that, and uh, it will be very difficult because you know the oh, the wages, the the the, the income, the monthly income in Serbia is terribly low, and uh, our silly government keeps keeps driving us to join European Union, European Union. And I'm like, oh, oh. no. So I keep I keep warning Serbian people, what is European Union? And I'll keep warning them as well. But first I thought because of this, you know, religion has become very popular with the demise of the communist or socialist regimes. All of a sudden you have everybody rushing to the churches. Everybody is now, uh, you know, very religious. You know, they, they keep the Saints Day. They keep Sunday. They do this, that and the other. Oh, Fasting is a big, fasting is a big thing here, you know, but it's not the fasting or it's a Lent actually. So it's not fasting in, 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 in biblical term, but it's a Lent, right. you know. In Eastern, right. in Serbian Orthodox Church, for example, you've got about three or four Lents, believe it or not. 
<laughs> wow. Yes, yeah, so I tell you, it's all in, in Gentile world. It's all very much complicated anyway. While you in, in, in America you have one Lent here, you've got about two or three or five Lents. You know, one is a Christmas Lent. The other one is Easter Lent. Uh, and they've got two other lands for whatever thing, anyhow. So uh, everything is just doubly, uh, doubly complicated, and people are just so superstitiously convinced that if they don't do those things, something horrible is going to happen to them. You know, God is going to punish them because the view of God is He is there punishing, a punishing being with a big, big rod. So you try to be disobedient and so on. So we are, you know, we are facing not only the. Uh, economic disaster here in Serbia. We're facing also the uh, incredibly, um, uh, incredibly ignorant, superstitious culture, which is equally dangerous. But nevertheless, I'm just uh, I'm just so glad that uh, people here, those few, those few who have realized their identity are holding out and enduring. And I keep that we will continue. But at the same time, I'm so th thankful that we started Hope of Israel Radio in Serbian. Uh, but because, you know, hope of Israel would not mean anything to Serbia, we just call it biblical biblical history, because every history of Christianity here is totally falsified, just like it is in the Western world. So uh, we still have a radio in Serbian. And speaking of radio, I have to be so, I'm so happy because uh, statistics show that we have reached various parts with radio, that very parts of the world that I don't recall being reached by any other message, like... The other yes. night there was the somebody in the capital of East Iceland. Uh, wow, other, Reykjavik. Yeah, somebody in Reykjavik was listening yeah. to our Hope of Israel. Uh, the other night, one night was they. I was always informed quickly. Look, somebody in Tirana has listened to our program. Wow, for, I don't know how many, how many hours? So somebody in the capital of Albania. The other night, uh, it was the capital of Slovenia. Ljubljana. Now we were so proud of that because for years here, in the Ljubljana is kind of within this Balkan, Balkan sphere. You might say East European. For years we were hoping that anybody in Ljubljana or in Slovenia would would hear the message, the message of the great kingdom of the kingdom of Israel and so on. But it never happened until we had radio. Then we That's were great. we were shocked to find the other day there was a little. <laughs> It's a little village, more or less little village in one of the Serbian regions. Some of them listen to, you know, uh, a region of Banat, by the way. And some of them listen. I was like, it, it, it's 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 absolutely amazing. Uh, I've noticed in my on my YouTube channel several people from Macedonia came as well. Now Macedonia is interesting, of course, and interesting. Now they call it the North Macedonia. That's okay. So people from North Macedonia came. Macedonia is a very interesting region because it does have the Israelized the Macedon, yeah, you see, and uh, and anyway, so uh, we have been with this with this radio. Then when you look at the statistics, you wouldn't believe for about two months <laughs> Sierra Leone was the <laughs> top country in wow. Africa to listen to Hope of Israel. You wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe where 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 the you know because it's an internet radio, of course. Right. So we don't depend on various satellites, various governments, various this, that, and the other. Hope of Israel has been now reaching basically the whole world because of internet. That was a genius, uh, genius device. Of course, it was my idea, but my friend, our friend Randy Fries from Canada, uh, was the one from Saskatchewan who just uh, paid for it and then set it all up. And just he just comes out and he just informs us. <laughs> he just informed us we have. Now we have our radio. <laughs> so we Israelites wow. now have our radio friends. We do have our friends. We have our radio. We have Gene Porter's programs. And that same radio, again, broadcasts our programs as well. Uh, 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 yeah, all, all the programs, they found it. They just downloaded it. Yeah. And then it's being just uh, just uh, uh, listed on the in the regular schedule. So uh, we have our we have our radio. We have our, if you want to have, as I said to my friend from Croatia. Uh, oh yeah, my friend from Croatia. Something else interesting. I have to relate to you. This this was, this was really epic. He came the other day. He says, "Look, when it comes to our, to our area, to area of former Yugoslavia, he says to me, you're basically the only one spreading the good news." Well, he said because he said I've listened to all of these other various, uh, there are various Protestants there like uh, Adventists and. Uh, 
uh, offshoots of Adventists, you know, kind of having their own programs and preachings and stuff. He says, but you know, they always send they always send the bad news. <laughs> he says, you know, is it? He said, is it? Is it really? Is it really good news to te- tell people how they're going to be destroyed and our our neighbors and our friends and our they're all going to be destroyed and stuff? He said, unlike you, he said, you speak about the restoration of Jerusalem. You speak about the restoration of the house of Israel. You speak about the good news of, you know, Messiah coming to rescue all the nations and stuff. Isn't that good news? He said, it is. But look at them. These others, they just preach the bad news. You're the only one who preaches the good news, which was yet another recognition, really, when you think about it, you know, that we preach the good news and we preach the good news. Yes, even though there are some bad episodes there in the good news but nevertheless the bad episodes are not because god hates you israelites the episodes bad they're there because god loves you that's right and he and And so so uh few people understand so few people understand that the kingdom is the end result the kingdom of heaven kingdom of that and (laughs) that you couldn't find better news than that no you couldn't find better news than that at all and uh, speaking of how uh, speaking, we well, we we have covered everything. But uh, speaking of how Israelites have 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 got uh, lost all over the place, uh, Gene and I came across. Uh, we we're speaking about Asia, Asia the other day, and we came across the nation Japan. Now, friends, yes. what do you know about Japan? You've got no idea why. Well, because my friend Margot Crossing, the other very recently, uh, our friend Margot Crossing heard from Japanese scholars that Hebrews are involved in the foundation of their nation. Right. Now, this is now this is not from common people. This is from Japanese scholars, so people who are learned, people who yes. obviously studied things. And right. you may wonder why. Well, well, I know why, because I've got it back in 2015. I have written a, a, an article from, I, I found somewhere, all those various information, so I just kind of composed them into an article in Serbian. If you don't mind me, but just, I'll just tell you what it is. For example, have you ever seen the Royal Regalia of Japan? The Royal Regalia is the flower, lotus. Now, lotus is a regalia, but lotus, interesting enough, it's the same lotus that you find. <laughs> you can listen to this in the Royal Regalia of King Solomon. Right. Oh, my, oh, my. Now, who was King Solomon? He was descendant of King David. So he was the one who established David's throne, remember? And then from them, as uh, as the covenant with, 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 with David would say, from Solomon on, there will be always a human king ruling right. on David's throne until the very, until the very return of the Messiah, who is going to, of course, establish that throne. And since Jesus Christ is the uh, descendant of David in flesh, that means that really forever there will be David's descendants on the throne of David. I mean, how? How logical. But anyway, Lotus, Lotus, just Google out Lotus in the Japanese royal family. That Lotus is exactly spittle image of the Lotus of of Solomon, my dear friends. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And then, you know, the scholars might be right, those scholars of Japan, Because in Genesis chapter 10, verse 2 to 5, there is a list of various nations. So you have the sons of Japheth, uh, and there is a son called Yavan. I'm not sure how you pronounce it in English, but it's J-A-V-A-N. Yavan, anyway, there's there's also Mesech, Tiras. And then, uh, anyway, you have various names there. But in any case, uh, the, the, the earliest even Chinese writers have described a nation whose name was the Three Han on the Chinese on the Chinese shore. Three Han. Han is most likely from Jav- Javan or Yavan, you know, yes. or Yahan. So yes. the three, there are three uh, forefathers of that nation. And that nation and that the uh, that nation basically uh, 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 occupied or uh, inhabited the Japanese Japanese islands. And those three are Mahan, Shon Han and Pien Han. And then there's a compilation called Nihon Shoki, which is the Chronicle of Japan, uh, which basically was written in the 720th year, year. And in that Chronicle of Japan, it says that the forefather of Japanese race, 
had four sons, which is indeed, if you take a look at Genesis, uh, it is uh, it fits with the four sons of Japheth's son, Yavan, as we can see in Genesis chapter 10, verse 2 to 5. Now, Yavan is exactly how Japan got its name, you see. <laughs> it's not Yavan or Javan, but it's Japan. And also one of, uh, of Yavan's ancestors, the Japanese Tsar Yemuteno, was also called Povori, which means the one who bends fire. Now, the one who bends fire, because that name Povori is also connected with the name of Javan's son Tarsis, who you find in Genesis, Tarsis, which means, um, which means the one who does things, has a trade with fire. Anyway. And also there are other, you know, there are other, yeah. other uh, investigators who say the Japanese also uh, descend from Gamer's son Ashkenaz or Ashkenaz and right. Togarma. And as you know, Jean, uh, the, the most popular religion in Japan is Shinto religion. Right. And what is interesting with Shinto religion, Shinto religion has no, as far as I know, it doesn't have anything written, any written sources. It was orally transmitted, transmitted to passed on from one generation to the other. And the most right. popular sacred sacred place or temple of that religion is, uh, is uh, Ise. And in that, in that sanctuary, you might say, there are mythological writings about the origin of Japanese. Now, Shinto religion also believes that uh, the spirits, kami, as they call them, that they fill the nature. Now, in that sacred place, in this... Uh, Sacred place Ise, there is a Japanese sacred mirror. It's a relic which nobody can see except a, 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 a Tsar who comes from, from God. And in that object, most likely we have a writing about the origin of Japanese. Now, some people who just managed to see that writing, that recording in that, on that object, uh, they say that uh, the uh, back of that mirror is made of bronze and that the script is uh, pretty much non japan style and that it resembles the ancient Hebrew or, or Aramaic script. Yes. Would you believe that? And based on that, of course, now uh, from that stand various uh, theories that J Japanese have some connection with the, with the ancient Israelites who right. disappeared from the Holy Land after the Assyrians conquered them in 722. But nevertheless, the scientists have established similarities between ancient Hebrew and modern Japanese ceremonies in priestly garment, right. in the structure and position of the sacred places, as well as in religion, in a language of ancient texts and also there are three uh, royal reg regalias that are also very similar. They are similar between ancient Hebrews and modern Japanese. They also say that the, the Japanese uh, royal seal, so the seal of the Tsar, Japanese Tsar, that it resembles the lotus. <laughs> Again, we come back to lotus. That was the symbol of King Solomon in ancient Israel. Isn't that amazing? Yes, isn't that, isn't that amazing? Yeah, isn't it amazing just overall when you stand back and you look at all these things that we've been talking about, yes. how how Yehovah has absolutely fulfilled exactly what he said he would do. Right. You know, that's that's something that we all need to realize. Is that he, that's something that, that God never lies. Exactly. That's right. He, that's right. He wasn't joking around when he said that he would spread this out to the four corners of the earth. Right. Because, because you look that's at Jeff exactly Japan. what he did. Right. right. Look at Japan from the standpoint of Jerusalem. Japan is like the utmost end of yes, the earth. Yes, exactly. And Australia and New Zealand and New Northern Zealand. Europe and North right. America. I mean, right. you know, in other words, in other words, he has taken this and cast us, cast us to the nations. Right. And, and I love the fact that in, in Amos 9, 9, he says that he will bring us back. And when he does, he will not drop a single kernel. Oh, no. He knows you know. all where you are, all Israelites. And if any of you have right. your hearts now jumping up and out for joy as you listen to us, there's a great 
opportunity that you are of Israel. And if those of you there, those of you who are still not <laughs> so happy about it, it doesn't matter. You're listening. And don't forget, all the nations will become Israelites. So one way or the other, we are all in the same, right. marching to the same destiny. No, that's right. That's right. And Thomas, Thomas uh -huh. says, Thomas says that he that he sees that that Yehovah is no respecter of persons. Of persons, exactly. Which means, which means, if I, if you and I have this, have this, this hope, and have this, this future that we can contemplate, that every human being has this same future they can contemplate, if they choose to obey the Creator of the universe. Certainly, certainly. It's all their choice, friends. God right. is not going to make you do anything, but he will, he'll kind of prod you a little bit and say, here, this is the way, go, you, you know, you know, <laughs> go this right. way. But he'll prod you, but he'll not force you. That's and right, exactly. In many, in many cases, it's your choice how your life is going to turn, for bad or for worse. That's but exactly again, right. among all of this knowledge that you have, and many of you, are, I know, many of Israelites are very educated and well, uh, well, uh, how can I say, standing out in their societies. It's the main, the most important knowledge still you might be missing, the knowledge of who you are, you know? That's right, uh, because if you don't know who you are, you don't know what your role is. You don't know what your responsibility exactly. is. You don't know why Yehovah made you. Exactly. And and if you don't know that, then what what hope have you? I mean, I mean, I, you know, that's the thing, and I'm sure that you've had the same experience, brother. But as we have discovered all these things that we talk about, we have come to the realization of why we were made. Yes, I mean, exactly. obviously, obviously, you know who you know why you were made. You're doing it. You're you're, you're fulfilling the role that Jehovah prepared you for. And I'm fulfilling right. the role that Yehovah prepared me for. And guess what? Every human being has a role that they were prepared for. Oh, and yes. the key, the key is for that for that person to dis, to figure out where he or she fits in the kingdom, and then to start walking it out, to start right, fulfilling right. that role. And that explains again why there is nothing racist, as some no. as some uninformed people would say. There is nothing racist in our name, Hope of Israel. We chose hope of Israel because it's hope of all the nations and all the races, a hope of every human being, because we'll all be grafted into Israel, the whole nations. That's, exactly anyway, right. that's the whole greatest mystery of the Bible. People never understand. Many people don't understand it, you know. Yeah. Uh, and if there is one mystery that is so, or one phenomenon so misunderstood, is the phenomenon of the church. Or the, the, the assembly, you know, people think church is like a steep building with a steep with a with a steep top, you know, with a cross on it and so on. No, 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 no. In the Old Testament, you have kahal, uh, the children That's of right. Israel, the congregation of Israel. In the New Testament, we have ecclesia, the people right. called out of this world, you know, called out for the for the glory and honor of God, and uh, you know, called being called, you know, living a way of living a way of life. Living a Torah way of life, living the way of life, it's a calling. Many people don't get it. You know, we remember how when Yeshua said, you didn't look for me, you didn't choose me, I chose you. <laughs> That's right. Because That's exactly people, right. Yeah, people think they can just volunteer. Oh, they can just find a church of their own choice and they can just volunteer to be Christians. No, friends. No, friends, because what you volunteer to be for, you volunteer to be for inadvertently, actually, the uh, the uh, the instruments of Satan. Because modern Christianity is nothing more than instruments of Satan, sadly. I know this is shocking to all of you, but it is it is true because they teach everything totally opposite to what to what the Messiah truly is, to what God is, totally opposite to what is the purpose of God and the plan of God for all of humankind. So right. that means that you know it cannot be it cannot be the instrument of God, or not, or at least not the true God. It can be only the instrument of the false God or false gods anyway. So um, yes, identity is important to know where we are, where we're going, what is our destiny, and what is our purpose. And every human being was created with a purpose. That's right. Yes, That's right. You know, you know Mark Twain. I, have you ever heard of Mark Twain? You know the American oh, author. Yes, he's well. Yeah. He's well known in Serbia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of one of my very favorite favorite quotes is one that he gave, and that is that the two most important days in a man's life 
are the day he is born and the day he finds out why. Why? Exactly. Exactly. That is the deal. When we figure that out, we finally are coming to fulfillment and we finally will start living the way we were supposed to live the day we were born. Precisely. And that's that's such a big deal. That's such a huge deal. Right. And once once we once we get past playing the religion game and instead start living our lives the way we're supposed to live our lives, that's that's when we start to see the realization and the fullness of the life that was placed before us. And that is such a big deal. It's a big deal indeed. Yes, Indeed. Yes, and what we're finding, we're, we're finding this true Bible history and true Bible. We find that the Israelites, through Japan, uh, and this statement that we heard from Japanese scholars that our friend Margaret crossing yes. made to us, we yes. find the Hebrews indeed fulfill the words of our God because God doesn't lie. And right. you know what else they've discovered? Not only that, that the truth we have discovered. Uh, the scientists have discovered not only that the uh, statement of these scholars of Japan are true, but that the, st- that the scientists have found very big similarities again between uh, uh, between the script or the or the the, the signs that the uh, Japanese use. Because as you may know, Chinese and Japanese uh, languages are expressed in signs. It's a sign right. language, not really not really in characters like with the rest of us right. have. And they've got some very, uh, you wouldn't believe, both languages, both sign languages, both sign scripts have got some some common symbols. Uh, of course, they're pronounced differently, but uh, they have the same meaning. For example, you have certain signs that show that those nations or that their ancestors were really well acquainted with certain happenings in Genesis. For example, we know from Genesis chapter 2 that God... Uh, 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 planted uh, a garden of, of Eden toward the east, right. and he placed men there to, you know, to keep up the garden. And uh, he also gave uh, all kinds of uh, things. Now, uh, in that art, uh, in that art, now the symbol of garden, Tien, as right. they call it in Japan, are the four irrigation channel, which are um, which are uh, 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 limited by by earth. Or four rivers with a tree in the middle. Right. <laughs> right. Then right. also God, as you know, God in Genesis, God told Adam, he commanded Adam not to touch the tree of the uh, of the knowledge of good and evil, because in the day that he would, you know, eat that that tree that fruit, he would uh, he would have uh, brought death uh, to his life. Now in Chinese. And Japanese uh, 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 sign language uh, forbidding something. Uh, the something is forbidden. Uh, it's also expressed with a symbol of two trees <laughs> and command. That something. Yeah, yes. that's something. <laughs> and then also wow. we know that, uh, of course, God first uh, uh, banned access to one tree, tree of knowledge of the good of, of good and evil, and then later. When men, of course, took from that knowledge, nevertheless, uh, God banned access to the other, to the other, other tree. We find it in, in Genesis chapter three, and uh, what Eve said to to Satan, "We eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, but of that one tree we right. will not eat the fruit." Now the uh, sign for fruit <laughs> in Japan is a symbol of tree, and uh, and the garden, and then Amazing. we also know the Satan in 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 uh, Satan, of course. Uh, what he did, Satan actually allowed, not allowed, but he secured that people would get alienated from God, because he 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 put some doubt in their minds that God is the the eternal, that He is the the one who created us, and that He, the Creator of them, uh, has had hidden certain information from them, you know, from, from the first humans. So how is the, how is the devil <laughs> described in Japanese science? <laughs> the devil, you have the devil described of combination of three signs, sign for secret, sign for a human, and sign, and a sign for the garden. <laughs> that's, wow. That's how combination of three actually, you know, describes Satan. Also, we know that Eve fell for Satan's lies. And she had the desire to, of course, take use of the, 
of the tree of the of the uh, of the of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of the evil, but uh, God forbid or disallowed access to also the tree of life, so that humans would not desire uh, to also you know take that tree. Uh -huh. So in this uh, sign language of Japan, I'm looking here, desire. How is desire or wish described? It's a combination uh, desire and greed. It's a combination of symbol of woman and two trees. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. And after, the more things you know, change, more they stay the same. <laughs> right. And then for, for, for nakedness, as you know, as they, they fell for the... Uh, uh, for this, 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 this tempting desire to take of the tree of good and evil. Adam and Eve, decide, uh, they noticed all of a sudden that they're naked. That's in right. Genesis 3, 7. Now, the sign language for nakedness combines clothing, tree, and garden. <laughs> so, naked, yes. you have a symbolism of, of, of clothing, of clothes, plus tree, plus garden. Yes. Uh, what so, else? So Gan Ganidan is everywhere. Right, right. I mean, we, Adam, we, yeah. As you know, they had children, which when they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, and they had, a, as Jesus Christ calls him, a righteous one, Abel. Abel. Now, righteous Abel would sacrifice right. to God sheep. And the uh, sign language in Japan describes a righteous person and righteousness by combination of a sign for a sheep, hand and spear <laughs> ah okay right right yeah. right right Amazing. uh what else oh yes we also have the uh uh in matthew 23 35 that statement of jesus christ that from from the blood of righteous abel all, all the way to you know to now the the sacrifice sacrificing of of of, of lamb was the uh precursor was the uh, symbolism of uh, the sacrifice of our Messiah, of our Passover sacrifice, uh, through which we gain righteousness. So in Japanese sign language, you have combination of uh, of uh, arm and spear, which means the uh, um, which means which is the uh, symbolism for I and 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 and, and we. So uh, you have uh, righteousness. Righteousness is combination of a sign of of, of a sheep. And then they have the uh, uh, the pronoun for I and uh, pronoun in, in 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 plural and in singular pronoun pronoun for I and for we, believe it or not. So uh, okay. Abel and Noah, okay. uh, the Bible calls them righteous people. They so I and we so uh, they they would sacrifice to God uh, clean animals such as such as sheep. You see, right? So right. this is absolutely amazing. And here is another perhaps interesting thing. Uh, the uh, the accounts in both Japanese and Chinese tradition about the universal flood. Uh, they say in their those tradition that there are only eight people, eight individuals who got saved, and we know that from the Old and the New Testament, of course. In the Old Testament, Genesis seven one, first uh, and the first Peter chapter three verse twenty. Uh, so the word chuan for a kind of boat uh, that is in Japan. Chuan, it is also expressed with uh, in this sign language like this. It's a combination of uh, of the sign for eight, plus a sign for mouth, and plus a sign for vessel. <laughs> so eight wow. vessel equals chuan, meaning the boat. And yes. then, of course, Ch Japanese tradition says that the first humans came to the world without... Uh, Without land, because as you remember in, in, in Genesis one and nine, it says there was no right. land, and the land disappeared. Uh -huh. And in the in the time of, of global flood, in uh, Genesis seven seventeen through nineteen, the land disappeared. And then there is a story of the uh, Tower of Babel, which is also, believe it or not, found its way in Japanese sign language, because um, all the mouth used to speak one language, and then all of a sudden they began speaking different languages. So the word for tower in the Japanese <laughs> sign language is also interesting. It's a combination of the symbolism for, for, for grass, plus symbolism for symbol for clay, plus symbol for people, plus symbol for one, plus symbol for mouth. 
<laughs> now, wow. why, why you might want the grass and clay? Well, the Babylonian um, tower was built of uh, built of, of of bricks made of grass, grass and clay. Right. So that's wow. why. So uh, just just several hints, several hints that really corroborate the claim or Japanese scholars that the Hebrews did or were involved very heavily in the establishment yes. of their nation. I think the lotus in the uh, uh, royal regalia of Japan is absolutely amazing. Find it out on the internet, just Google it out, and the lotus you find, that's exactly the lotus of Solomon, the symbol of Solomon. Absolutely, yes. amazing. absolutely amazing. So uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Well, brother, so, just some I, more science. Anyway, I want to thank you for the two hours of your time that you've given me. I, I oh, really appreciate yeah. that a lot. Anytime. And, uh, Hope of Israel will be proud to broadcast this numerous yes. times. <laughs> I, will, I will piece it together and I will get it to you as soon as I can. Thank you. And uh, I want to thank you again for this and for all that you do. And I just, uh, I just want to say one thing, and that's the same thing I say at the end of every one of these. And that is, remember, remember who, who you, you are. Let your people come together in unity. What a blessing he's commanding when we're together. The morning dew pouring on our heads, precious so from you, falling from the mountain, water fresh and cool, running down the beard, and we know it's true. How pleasant, how good, how beautiful it is, how pleasant. How good, how beautiful it is. Hey.